Isaiah chapter 59, James, the 59th book of the Bible. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. And the best way to describe this, you think about someone who's hanging off on a cliff or drowning, that when he reaches out the hand, it's there to grab your hand. It's not like, oh, come on, you reach too, we'll, we'll meet together. No, the Lord's hand is at full length for our help. Neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Psalm 66, 18. And when we think the Lord's not listening, we need to realize that God is a patient God and he's going to do things in his own time. He heard us. He's just not going to be quick to answer. And sometimes his answer will be silent. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. You lose fellowship because of your iniquities. And that's why you think God's ear is heavy. But his hand and his arm are there at full length to save you. And your sins have hid his face from you. So picture the fact is that God won't look upon you. So what happened when Jesus was on the cross and the sky went dark? And he cried, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? When sin came upon Jesus, God hid his face. Now, you may be saved, but God may not be looking at you. If you were to see in a pantry or a cupboard somewhere, a bowl or dish or glass or vase covered with filth, would you sit there and stare at it? That he will not hear. The only thing God will hear from a sinner, saved or lost, is repentance. That is what will get God to hear you. First John 1 John 1.9 For your hands are defiled with blood, murder. And we're talking to Judah, Jerusalem. They are killing people. They are killing babies. They are killing their children. They are killing the prophets. They are killing the widows, the, the fatherless. And your fingers with iniquity. Your fingers operate. Your fingers do things that make things work. You grip a bike at the handles with your fingers. You can make the little bell go ding ding with your fingers. You can squeeze the brake with your fingers. You hold a coffee cup with your finger. Push button, finger. Dial it, well not dial, but push a phone, finger. And the fingers of the people are iniquity. What they touch, what they operate, what they do. Your lips has spoken lies. That is one of the abominations that God hates in Proverbs. God does hate and is spoken of twice in that list. Your tongue has muttered perverseness.
<clears throat> God is against lies. And God's against you speaking pervertedly. None call for justice. In America recently, they called upon the chief justice of this country, and we didn't get it. We didn't get a Bible justice. We got a worldly sinner iniquity justice. But here Judah is not even asking the courts. And the courts in the Old Testament of Judah, Israel, would be Leviticus and Deuteronomy. The first five books of Moses would be the law. So not calling upon justice is not calling upon the word of God, what God has to say about it. When they brought that woman and caught in adultery with Jesus. What did the law say? Did they do it? No, they used the situation to try to catch Jesus in his words. To show, alright, if he obeyed the law, look how unfriendly and kind of person he is. Oh, if he would say, let her go. Well, look at that. He violates the law. Loophole. Nor any pleadeth for truth. There's no truth. Again, minus the word. Jesus said, sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is true. Pilate says, what is truth? And he's standing right in front of it. John 1.1 1, 1. They don't want to know the truth. Go in a public ministry and see how much the people want truth. They trust in vanity, drugs, music, entertainment, sex, alcohol. What is it? All right, you take a guy who's involved in alcohol. That is his crutch. That is his trust when he's down and got problems in life. What does that do for him when he's dead? Put in his coffin all the booze he can drink. And what's it going to do for him? All right. When he's in his house and he's involved in illegal drugs, that is his, that is his hope. That is take care of him in times of trouble. That is to escape out of the world, you know. And what do you do when he has no more money? And he's borrowed from everybody he can borrow. And he stole from whoever he can steal from. Emptiness, vanity, no more drugs, no more money. No more life, no more alcohol, vanity. Yet when we call upon the God our help and our stay. You know, you could be flat, broke, and owe everybody. Yeah, if you call upon the Lord with a clean heart, he'll show up. We've already read about previously in the chapters, come and buy water without no price. Come and buy that you have no money. And speak lies. Look at that. That's twice. Proverbs spoke it twice. And it's spoken twice again. What is the trust here with the lies? It said your lips have spoken lies. Now your trust in vanity and speak lies. I can overcome. I can quit at any time. I'm not dependent upon it. And you give me the other thousand more reasons. You know you're lying. I'll give it up someday. You're lying to God. And you better confess that as a sin. I'm not dependent of it. You are lying. It's a sin. See, America, even in the churches, we downcast lies. It's little white lies, polka dot. A lie is a lie to God. And you know what? You better get that because you're going to stand before judgment, saved or lost. 
And you're going to realize that lies, no matter what they were, you will be held accountable. They conceive mischief. You ever hear someone say, that's just a mischievous little child? Well, this is in a list of things that are iniquity and sin. Conceive is to bring forth. All right, you call that boy a mischievous child. You conceived him. Now, I know I'm stretching that. But if you conceive a mischievous child, that is a vanity. That is a sin. But the verse is about you produce mischief and mayhem in your life and God's against you. You're a troublemaker. And bring forth iniquity. They hot they yeah. They hatch cockatrice eggs, and that's an adder, a very poisonous snake. And weave the spider's web. What's a spider web? Spider web is something that you know if you walk into and you become a ninja of the night, trying to get out of it. It's like, Ew. I mean, when you see a spider web, is that just something you want to walk up and point and touch? You look up fascinated and you turn away. Unless you're a child like me and you see spider webs, you go gather ants and all kinds of bugs and throw them in there and watch the spider have a delight. But they weave the spider's web. You know, a spider has a unique characteristic that God has given that little insect the ability to do what she does, what he does, that eateth of their eggs, diet. Poison. And that which, cr uh, that which crushes, breaketh out into a viper. Their webs shall not become garments. Would you like to wear a spider web as a garment? What kind of protection is that going to give you? They have not yet in technology ever taken a web and making use of it. You can't wear a spider's web. It's going to break and it'll fall apart. But have you ever seen a spider web? you ever see a, a, a fly get caught in it? There's no way for that fly to get out. It's doom. One chance in a hundred will that fly actually get free before that spider comes. But you're not going to wear it as a garment. Neither shall they over. Uh, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. So your works are not going to do nothing. Eating eggs are going to kill you. Making something of a spider's web that shouldn't. Be, it's vain worthless it's stupid try something else their works are the works of iniquity you're playing with snakes and spiders that's the one of the characteristics of witchcraft movies and, and sorcerer movies you know eye of new and <coughs> snakes and the <coughs> And the act of violence, violence in their hands. So these sins have to do with a spider and with snakes. Snake eggs that bring forth more snakes. A spider's web which is her home. Her entrapment. A snare to catch things to kill them and to suck the juices out. Sucking the life out of people. Their feet run to evil. And there are churches out there that these people run to and they'll take them in. They call themselves churches. Proverbs chapter 1 gives a warning to a son. Don't go follow their ways. You better halt yourself. 
You better think about. You better weigh the consequences. Before you get stuck in that web. You know anybody's been involved in a sin and they just, you know, by the time they were caught, I just didn't realize I'd go that far. <coughs> I didn't think it would ever go this far. You mean I have to have this body part cut off? You mean I got to have this disease for the rest of my life? You mean I got to spend all this time in jail? The wages of sin is death. You mean I ate an egg that's going to kill me? You see where the snake and the serpent is now? You just think, well, you read it and it's like, what's that have to do with anything? You're that little fly flying around, ah, uh, boom. Help me, help me. And there is no help. You're trapped. And it's a sorry thing. Their feet run to evil, they make haste to shed innocent blood. That's Proverbs chapter 1. That is murdering somebody. And they do it quickly. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. You know, most of the ways that man has thought about Killing another man has been developed through war. War has brought you a bigger and more way of killing more people. Guillotine was a thought of one man one day. I don't care what you think about guns. <coughs> The gun was designed to kill. All right, animals, that's perfectly fine, but who was the first person who thought about taking it and using it on a human being? Somebody had to think about it. There's a game out there, you play with a bunch of people, and you go around the board, and you got to try to figure out which of the murder weapons somebody thought of. To kill somebody else, and in what room was it done? In? Somebody had to think of the candlestick. Who would have thought? How about, hey, no one's home. I can www. It'll be a little while before they get home. That's iniquity. You know, the cashier's not looking at that, that, that gum. Anybody can take that gum. They're not looking. Wasting and destruction are in their path. Their walk of life, wasting. And you know, God never wastes. You know, when he fed that 4,000, you know what he told his disciples to do? Go pick up the crumbs. And what do you do with that? He handed it to the disciples. Destruction. You ever see pictures of a tornado that has gone through a city? You notice how there's mass destruction. But you'll see in that same pattern, maybe one person or one house was left standing. Well, that's a Christian. That, that's someone who's living right and doing right. God just said, okay, hey, stop that tornado there. Jump around that place. They're not iniquity. They're doing right. And then again, yeah, a Christian may get that tornado. Egypt. They didn't have the blood. There was destruction. And there was a wasting of life. The first form. The way of peace they know not. 
I gotta say, I know what peace is of God. I have been in turmoil and in the storm and resting. I have been there asleep with Jesus on the pillow. But everybody else is, they got the coffee cans, they're bailing. There's nothing like the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there is no judgment in their going. They don't think about what their actions can do for someone else and for themselves. They don't think about the harm they can do to anybody, including themselves. You know what's wrong with the correction system of America? There's no judgment. It's a timeout. And once you're free, go do it again. And then you get another timeout. Meanwhile, when you get a timeout, you get cookies and, and everything. You get a place to stay. What kind of judgment is when you get free meals a day? hot and cold running water. Listen, I can speak frankly and personally about this. I've been in the jail ministry and when it comes to jail, it's very close to my family. There is no judgment in America. How many people are sitting on death row for a crime of murder and will last out a life sentence by dying of natural causes. They have made them crooked paths. Is that the way of the Lord? Straight is the gate. Straight is the way. That's not the, that's not the Lord, these crooked paths. You know, you take point A to point B. If point A to point B is straight path, let's say one mile. It's one mile. And you can probably see point B. But if that was weaving in and out, it's more than a mile. You have added distance. And you can see it, then you can't see it. Then you can see it, then you can't see it. Then you can see it, then you can't see it. But point B is not the same point B for someone who does right in the Lord. Someone who does right in the Lord by the straight gate, point B is New, new Jerusalem, the new heaven, the new earth. Point B, B for the crooked path is the, is the lake of fire. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. And we, <coughs> and we already read the other night, there is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. So you're looking at a wicked person here who can't have peace. Peace is the fruit of the Spirit. Go ahead. Get your paycheck on Friday. Blow it Friday night. Blow it Saturday morning. Blow it Sunday. Monday. Oh, Monday. I got to start back over again. I don't have a Monday in my life. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Every day is a rejoicing. I don't go on artificial needs that, that run out. You got the worldly peace. Jesus said, my peace I give to you, not as the world give it. The world will give you peace, but it's very temporal. It don't last. Therefore is judgment far from us. Man's judgment. 
God is coming. You know, Babylon's coming. Nebuchadnezzar is coming. Had they judged themselves, Babylon or Nebuchadnezzar would never have came. They didn't pull these people and say, hey, you're guilty. Let's see what the God says about it. God says, for that crime, you need to be stoned. That crime, you owe him a four lambs and a servitude. You know, when you got to pay fourfold for what you stole, that that make, if you think about the judgment, the penalty, that, hey, you know what? How can I pay fourfold if I ain't got even one fold? Neither does just, justice take, overtake us. Can you imagine what Jerusalem is right now? We have <coughs> judgment <coughs> and justice in America. <coughs> <coughs> sort of. I mean, there are some courts and justices that if somebody hits your car and you can prove that they're guilty, you can get your car fixed. You're getting a point here in, in Jerusalem. No judgment, no justice. Guy walks up and shoots your camel. You go to the court. Yes yeah, so or what? We know who that guy is. He's a good guy. Get out of here. We're not going to be bothered. By the way, don't go so far because it's a Sabbath. You can't go that far on the Sabbath. We wait for light. There are some who want right and light. But behold, obscurity. See John chapter 3 about that. John chapter 1. For brightness. That's the second advent in the Lord Jesus Christ. But we walk in darkness. That is the last seventh year of the tribulation. The great tribulation. When the sun and moon are darkened. And the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ comes as a light of fire. We grow. That means in the middle of the night, you know, if you ever get up in the middle of the night to go use the bathroom, you're feeling around, okay, this is the wall. Ow! That's the coffee table. And you're trying to find your way around with your hands. There's a crime. When you use your hands to touch things. Or groping. For the wall like the blind. You can't see. If it didn't just say over here that the fingers or something wrong with the fingers. Your fingers with iniquity. And we grope as if we had no eye. No light. You can't see. You're going to stumble. You're going to fall. It says we stumble at noonday. Noonday. That's the highest point. That's when Paul saw the light of the Lord Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. As it in the night. You ever have a thunderstorm come in? It is just bright and sunny. And next thing you know, it just gets dark. Now, they didn't have street lights back then. They had candles. There was no light bulbs. And when it was night and there was no moon, it was dark. It's like that in some countries in Africa, speaking to a missionary's wife. If you can feel that darkness when, the, when, when it's, the, I think it's a new moon, when there's no moon, you can just feel it. But yet you can see all the stars clear. It's the middle of the afternoon and you, you don't even know where you're going. They open your eyes that we may see. 
We are in, this is the condition of Israel right now. Before the Lord Jesus Christ comes. Not a bone of him shall be broken. Do you know they have a piece of broken lamb bone on a plate on their Passover? They completely obscured the scriptures. They ain't paying to the attention to the scriptures. The scriptures say three times a year your mail shall go to Jerusalem. They don't. You know who goes to Jerusalem? The Gentiles visit the holy city. There have been Gentiles that have been to the holy city more than a Jewish person in New York. If you were to take all the Jews in one room and all the Gentiles of America in another room, give them a piece of paper, draw me something in Israel that you have seen with your eyeball. How many Jews would have pictures? How many Gentiles would have pictures? I don't care if it was a rock. I don't care if it was a monument. I don't care if it was a cafe. I don't care what. I view with your eyeball, your eyeball, looking at no picture, no movie, standing there in Israel, who could draw a picture? I bet you there'd be more Gentiles that could draw pictures than the Jews. Yet the last book of their of their Bible, Second Chronicles, says, "Go back." You know the last book, the last book, and the last thing that, of the Christian says, "Even so, come, Lord Jesus." You know what we're supposed to be doing? We're supposed to be doing what the Jews are supposed to be doing. We're looking for the Messiah, the Blessed Hope. They're not. We stumble at noonday as is night. That's just sorry. We are in desolate places. Nowhere. Just absolutely emptiness. As dead men. Tombs. You know, you ever been to a cemetery and see one of those big buildings, the mausoleums? Right there. We roar like bears. And mourn sore like doves. You hear a dove sing? That is just, that's just so pathetic. It's like, it's, help me. Come join me. I'm alone. And you rarely ever hear another dove answer. At least I haven't. And I could be wrong. We look for judgment. But we read that says they are not looking for judgment. Contradiction, throw your Bible in the garbage? No. There will be a time in Israel's darkness they're going to look for a judgment. They're going to get serious. They're going to say, we had enough. Enough is enough. God, we don't know what the problem is. But there's a problem between us and you. Now, whatever it is, but there is none. Seven years long. Three and a half years of that great tribulation. And they run down the sale of Petra, a place Revelation 12 says, prepared by God. They run down there. Do they run into God? No. But he feeds them. He gives them water. He gives them protection. For salvation. They run all the way down to hell Petra for, to be saved. But, is yet, uh, but it is far off from us. Where is their salvation? Getting mounted up in heaven. 
Come on, Peter, James, and John. Get everybody on their horses now. Mount up. As the Lord Jesus grabs grabs his white horse by the reins. All right, come, whatever the name of the horse is. Gets in front of his bride, gets in front of the army. Israel's looking for me. Like we're looking for him right now. As Jesus sits anxiously for the Father to say, go get your bride. And it may be far off for us. We don't know the time. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee. They're finally getting the point. They're finally realizing the condition they're in. And our sins testify against us. Wait a minute. Judgment and justice? Will you call? Uh, will the state call the next witness? Yes, we call in. What's the name of your witness? The sins of Israel. You swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. All right, take a seat. And can you imagine when sin of Israel sits on that seat? Okay, what do you got to tell us? Adultery, murder, rape. Taxation illegally, espionage, fatherless, the widows, lying. And then you put all those categories of what Israel has done. And with the names that go with it. You better have all your sin. Under the, blood of Le under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, Christian, when you stand at the judgment seat of Christ, don't you let sin get up and take that witness stand. Take the stand, Mr. Sin. Yeah. What do you guys say about this Christian? Bad mouthing, lying, stealing. Will the state call their next witness? Yes, we call in sin. Sin, yeah, you swear to tell the whole truth. What do you guys say about this Christian? Well, speak. I can't. You guys say something. God the Father won't let me speak. Why not sin? Because it's all under the blood. I can't speak. And I say that under the truth as an oath I did before God. I can't say enough. It's all under the blood. Can you imagine that? But I know when I'm, the time I reach Lord Jesus Christ, I'm sorry to say, sin is going to step in the witness seat and he's going to have things to say about me. And you know what? They're going to be all true. He doesn't need a lie. He's going to be, bring up all the people I didn't witness to that I had opportunity. And there'll be much more to say. But I don't need to say. For our transgressions are with us. For our transgressions are with us. I'm trying to think of a illustration. And the only thing I can think of is, and this doesn't happen, but you're on the way to the courthouse and you're taking a bus. And there you are seated in the bus. The only thing is, every, any, everyone else on that bus, like Pilgrim's Progress, is a representation of what you have done in your life. Your transgressions are with us. Who are 
you going to have with you on that bus when it arrives? Liars. Cheaters. What kind of sinners are you going to have? <coughs> what is your character? Fear is going to be there. Anxiety. Anger. Impatience. Do nothing. Did nothing. Know nothing. And as for our iniquities, we know them. God's going to reveal it. You better ask God to reveal your iniquities now and not at the judgment. I've said this often and I do it. One of those nights that I can't sleep. Or times there's nothing, nothing comes to my thought but sin. And I've been sick lately. And it's one of the things, Lord, if this sickness is because of sin, show me my iniquity so I can confess it and get it right with you. And for some reason, I keep thinking about impatience. I don't know why impatience keeps popping up. And the funny is, it's, I'm not even done with the prayer. Impatience shows up. Like, couldn't you wait? But are you scared to pray that prayer? I'd rather I'd rather have the Lord work in my heart right there in the in laying in the bay, then you know come in the courtroom and poof, here's impatience show right up. I you know I remember I'm like, no. Imagine a Christian involved with a whore, whore mongling. Do you imagine what that character is going to show up in the courtroom? Hi right, right, boys, how you doing? Ooh. Who are you here for? Him? That one? It's not something that you're going to want to show up as your character standing before the Lord Jesus Christ. Hi, boys. How about drunkenness? How would you like to have that show up at your judgment before the Lord? <laughs> how are you doing? <laughs> I can beat you all up. One more round. Wouldn't you be embarrassed? You imagine standing in front of your church people and you've got. How are you doing? Ooh, excuse me. Would you really like to have that stand before your Lord, your family? You better know them now and put them under the blood, 1 John 1, 9. And tra transgressing and lying. Oof. Oh, Lord, get rid of that one. Against the Lord. Lying against the Lord. And departing away from our God, backslider. Speaking of oppression and revolt, we're going to go away from God. We're going to go do our thing. Conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falseness. The judgment is turned away backward. Just like Christians are today. Just like Israel was. Justice stands afar off. I'm here. Uh, you don't want it. For truth is falling in the street. Help me. Help. Someone pick me up. And equity, equity cannot enter. Yea, truth faileth. That's what happened in America today. And he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. You want to do right? Let's go get him. You don't want to make that cake for us. We're going to crucify you. You don't like our flag and you don't like the flag that we don't like. We're going to get you. 
If you don't marry us, we're going to get you. You hypocrite, you vile person. Arr! And the Lord saw it. The Lord saw it. And is disple it and it displeases him that there was no judgment. When they're getting in your face because you're preaching on the street and throwing vegetables and stuff at you, and no one stands up and says, knock it off, they're doing right. God said, I see that. I'm taking names. Probably writing down the sizes of the of the radishes too. Inch and a quarter, write that one down. You took a bite out of it, so you can't take it all. Write that down in the books. Slam the door right in that guy's face. Write that down. Give the guy a kick in the rear, rear end. Write that one down. Gabriel, come over here. Write that guy spit in one of my people's face. We're going to give him a piece of paper about Jesus. Write that down. I saw that. And he saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness it sustained it. There's two people, you know, when they're getting in my face in the street ministry, there's two people who come up right in the middle of it and say, I thank you for being here. That's an intercessor. America will get to the point, you know what, you just may be on your own. You may get to a point where Americans will stand up for the Lord Jesus Christ. A Muslim will come up and say, listen, you better knock it off or I'm going to kill you. And everybody around says, kill him. Sound familiar? Crucify him. Who stood up for Jesus? and said, no. Who stood up for Jesus? Peter, James, John? Who said, I'll take his place? For he put on the righteousness a breastplate. Oh, look at the armor. The helmet of salvation upon his head. This is a guy who's dressed in the armor. And he put on the garments of vengeance. And that's not us. Paul says, vengeance is mine. I will, repay, I will repay something like that. And my grandma used to forget to say, saith the Lord. She always forgot, thus saith the Lord. You gotta put the Lord in there. He belongs there, not you. Alright. And was clad with the zeal as a cloak. There's a Christian armor in the Old Testament. <coughs> according to his according to their deeds, not Christian. Old Testament. According to according he will repay. Fury to his adversary. Recompense to his enemies. I will curse them that curse thee. To the islands he will repay recompense. You better believe whoever goes against those Jews are going to get food. They're going to get. They're going to get a worse hell. There are different degrees in hell. So, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rise of the sun to the east. Worldwide. When the enemy shall come in like a flood. The world against God. The Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, shall lift up a standard against them. Da -da -da -da! Put the flag up. Let's go. Our banner over us. Mount up, son. Get ready. Go get them. Get the bugle. Da -da 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 -da. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion. There's the second advent. And unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob. He's coming to get the Jews that are doing right, that got right. Hop on, boys. Get on the bandwagon. There are only going to be empty horses for the Jews. Wagons. 
You ever wonder about that? Daddy's going to pick them up and we're all going to go in one company into Jerusalem. As for me, God speaking, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My spirit, the Holy Spirit, that is upon thee. I know it says upon, not in. We have the Holy Spirit in us. My words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth. Nor out of the mouth of thy seed. That hasn't happened. Nor out of the mouth of thy seed's seed. Saith the Lord. From henceforth. There's going to be a day the Lord's going to come and redeem his people. He's going to put the word in their mouth. He's going to give them the Holy Spirit. And it's never going to depart again ever again. That's a thousand year reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then when we go into the... Into the Eternal fraternities. 